international affairs editor Catherine Norris Trent joins us now for, with more on that story. Now, as we've seen, there have been claims, counterclaims about the military situation in Solidar. What are the various actors saying? Well, um, so the head spokesman for the Eastern Group of Ukraine's Armed Forces has said that Russian statements about the capture of Solidar are untrue. He says that fierce fighting is ongoing um, and that this these claims by various Russian actors are part of an information war to disseminate false information. The Russian Ministry of Defense this Friday said that uh, it had captured the town, which is about 17 kilometers north of the city of Bakhmut, which of course we've heard an awful lot about there in the Donbass, really at the epicenter of the fight there in the east of Ukraine. Very fierce fighting indeed. Now, it, to try and pick through the, the various claims and counterclaims is incredibly difficult. Um, without being on the ground, and even their access is extremely difficult. Um, the Institute for the Study of War, they've said, based on their analysis of satellite imagery, that Russian troops likely control most, if not all, of Solidar. So they're saying it's been incredibly fierce fighting, also pointing out that Russia seems to have diverted a great many troops there in recent days, even from Bakhmut, another flashpoint. So really clearly keen to get hold of Solidar, which would permit them, if they did consolidate that, to, um, well, surround Bakhmut from the north as well as being there in the eastern outskirts of Bakhmut. It's a salt mining town with large salt mines, so very commercially, strategically uh, value, but above all it would have a symbolic value if, again, I'm mm. saying if, that was confirmed um, for the Russian gains, um, that would be, you know, Russia hasn't had a major battlefield gain since August. Um, this would be perhaps a boost for them, something they could talk about very much to the population at home. And it would also allow them to mount artillery positions there to further bombard Bakhmut, which is becoming this just major battle. in the mm, Indeed. Now, you mentioned those claims, counterclaims. It's been really difficult to get a clear picture of what the situation was this week. Would you say this exposes some of the divisions within the Russian military and paramilitary sphere? Definitely. This is very revelatory because if we look at which who's saying what, on Wednesday, you had Yevgeny Prigozhin, who is the head of the Russian mercenary group Wagner, which is a mm. private military organization. He was posted a picture of himself apparently in a tank in Solidar, in a salt mine, saying that Wagner troops had taken Solidar. And then this Friday, you've had the Russian Ministry of Defense saying that actually it was Russian regular troops, airborne divisions being brought in who'd taken the town. So you'd think that if they hadn't had a battlefield victory for many months, going back to this summer, that they'd suffered major defeats, that any kind of gains, they would be crowing about it. Rather, it's, it's exposed these divisions. Um, and we can see that this is like a power struggle basically going out in military command and in top levels around the Kremlin. And perhaps we can read into this some of the reasons why there was this abruptly um, re rebalancing of Russia's war command, a replacement there of Sergei Sorovkin, Sorovkin, who had been in place only since October. October, he's now been demoted to number two behind General Valery Gerasimov, who is uh, the chief of uh, general staff of the Russian Armed Forces. So there perhaps we could read into that again, uh, Putin siding with Russia's military establishment by giving that boost to Gerasimov and, and demoting Sorovikin. Prigozhin, the head of Wagner, has previously praised uh, Sorovokin. So there's this clearly a power struggle there going out there for influence in the top military and paramilitary spheres there. There's been a lot of criticism of Putin, of military leadership among military bloggers. That's been coming out even more. We can see that the losses on the battlefield and the losses throughout this war are having political consequences and perhaps the Kremlin there trying to paper over some of the cracks. Mm, indeed, from the front line, it all does lead back to Moscow. Catherine Norris-Trent, thank you very much for that analysis.